Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of what's new in Vantage 2 Update 1. We added support for NVIDIA's DLSS 3.5 with its ray reconstruction feature. We also added support for refraction glossiness. We improved the scene state system with animations and more. And we added experimental support for Intel Arc GPUs. For this demonstration I'm using a scene from Evermotion Arc Interiors. I'm using the NVIDIA AI Denoiser and it's great when you're not moving the camera or anything in the scene, but as you can see as I walk around and navigate um, there are some splotches here, especially on the chairs, and uh, there are also some splotches here on the top uh, in the lamps. And um, in uh, reflections it's also particularly blurry and uh, splotchy. If I leave it rendering for a while, it gets uh, sharper and crisp, but while navigating it's uh, not that defined. Alright, so I'm going to switch to the DLSS denoiser, which uh, automatically um, denoises and reconstructs the image with its ray reconstruction feature. And you can see it being enabled by this uh, icon and the slider here on the toolbar. And it says one time X, uh, which means that it will improve the quality. As you can see, the image is much more stable um, when I'm navigating. There's absolutely no flickering and the quality is much, much better. If we take a look at the reflections, they're a bit blurrier, but the splotches are not there and there's no flickering. Um, all right, so we actually um, split the two denoisers or the denoiser when moving and the denoiser when standing still into two diff different categories. So you can choose and mix different denoisers. And in this case, I'm going to use the um, AI denoiser when I'm not moving and the DLSS with ray reconstruction while I'm moving to get the best of both worlds. Now you can see everything is really nice and smooth. And when I pause the camera for just a second, and the quality gets much better, especially in the reflective and the refractive parts of the image. All right, so now I'm going to increase the quality settings, uh, allowing more bounces and more light in, but that actually increases calculations and uh, you'll see that the frame rate um, got lower. Now, uh, this will impede my uh, interaction in the scene. So I'm going to use another feature of the DLSS, uh, which is the upscaling and reconstructing the image from the lower resolution that is rendering. So by sliding this slider to the left, I'm essentially uh, quartering the resolution and getting much higher frame rate while still preserving the details and the quality while getting improved interaction. All right, now I have a close-up camera over here on the table, which will show this, uh, this pair of frosted glass in the a vase and on this cocktail glass over there. And if I search in the material browser, you'll see the uh, frosted or the blur refracted shaders over there. And uh, that's a really cool feature that was uh, requested for multiple times. Um, you can see the liquid is actually clear and the glass is frosted. I'll move it around to see that it blurs the background. So, yeah, now you can render this type of effects. I will increase the resolution by sliding the slide to the right to get a bit more details or bring it back to get more performance. Now for the next feature, I'll, um, I'll show uh, the setup I have. I have a couple of cameras over here and they have states bound to those. Um, the states are here. This is the night state, date state, and also a state where the chairs are um, in front of the table. Now I'm going to... Um, Actually, I have created an animation already with assigned states and there you have the different cameras. And the cool part is that if you play back the animation, the states are interpolated. And um, you can see that uh, we are switching between those different states during the playback of the timeline. The uh, lights are being enabled, the sun is moving around and the chairs are sliding, which means that you can now create animations with the state system. The next addition that we added is um, the ability to create states directly uh, from the toolbar with this button. And that will allow you to make modifications of the scene. So let's hide those guys, for example. 
And I'm also going to change the material of the table like that. All right, so uh, let's increase the lights. Maybe not that much, a little bit less, okay. All right, so as you can see, I'm doing multiple changes to different aspects of the scene without creating substates. And I'm going to create a state from this button over here, which will create both a state and the substates uh, for this state, which will let you create the um, state much easier. Instead of, you know, planning ahead and creating substates, there is just one button to create the whole state altogether, which should uh, make making states and animations much easier. And that concludes this video. I hope you liked the new features. Thanks for watching and take care.